Technology is a great enabler. If you've got a smartphone and an idea, you can start a micro multinational company. You can become a creator and reach a global audience. Or you can get a, a really important social message out there, largely unedited and uncensored. Yet the digital age is more than ever a human age. Sounds strange coming from a Google guy? Let me explain why I say that using a story of wonderful personal connection. The story starts in Mitcham in South London, pretty poor part of town, with this guy, Quasi Court. Quasi grew up with good parents, but they split early on and it was kind of messy. He didn't have much access to information, much access to education, much access even to positive role models. But he had a big dream. His dream was to do music. He's a fantastic lyricist. He can sing and he can rap. But he didn't know how to do that. To do music, you need time and you need money. So like many in Quasi's situation, he fell into a nefarious lifestyle. He turned to the streets. He felt it was the only way that he could buy himself the time uh, and earn himself the money to realize his dream. He knew it was wrong, he didn't want to do it, but he didn't feel there was any other way. He was a conscientious gangster. He's also a very curious and well-read guy. He reads a book a week, very smart, and he lived this life uh, of two worlds. He'd have a shotgun on one side of his bed for self-protection, and the latest book he was reading on the other. Every day, he would put his life at risk. And he'd then put that money into doing what he loved. Eventually, that risk caught up with Quasi. His friend was shot in the head and killed. His cousin, who was just 15 at the time, was stabbed. He survived, fortunately, but he got a hot head and he went around in a revenge attack and, and killed the person who had attacked him and got prison time. In combination, this was the wake-up call Quasi needed. He was determined to do music, but not like this. This was not his narrative. So Quasi took the brave decision to withdraw himself from this street life, to cut his ties, and to take the long and hard road. Doing some freelance work here and there, scraping together as much money as he could along the way, to pay for studio time, photography, videography. We met through a mutual connection, a guy called Joe Binder. Joe's a privileged guy from North London, quasi a talented artist from a poor suburb of South London. And they connected because they had something in common. They were both YouTubers. Joe started a YouTube channel when he was at Cambridge University, vlogging about what it was like to be at this impressive university. Quasi used YouTube to get his music out. And they met in Soho where Quasi was filming. And Joe recognised he was probably making YouTube content. And they struck up a conversation. Joe knew 
technology could help Quasi. So he connected us, actually over WhatsApp. Quasi and I had a first meeting and struck up a mentoring relationship. He was helping me understand what life was like growing up in less privileged circumstances in a poor neighborhood in South London. I was helping him as much as I could think through things like how to think of a budget, how to make a budget, how to construct a marketing plan, how to build an audience through social media. And we hatched this plan to raise some money. Quasi wanted to do an album. He's got this wonderful mixture of grime, which is a type of rap, and rock, and he puts them together. He calls it grok. And he wanted to do an album of his work and his unique sound. So we hatched a plan initially to help him raise money through a crowdfunding platform called Kickstarter. The problem with Kickstarter is you can campaign for weeks and weeks and, and weeks and even if you get 90-95% of your budget target you won't get anything. You have to hit or exceed your target. I also felt that the budget that Quasi had set out with uh, was unrealistically low. I came home after a long meeting with Quasi about this project and I asked myself, what can I do to make a difference? I invest in small companies. I'm an angel investor. I don't know much about music, or at least I didn't at the time. But I know a lot about digital and technology, and that's largely where music lives these days. So I thought, why don't I think about this as a business? So I literally googled how to start a record label. And I found a company called Ditto, based in Liverpool, that did record label in a box. I'll have one of them. So Big Community Records was born. It's a business on a social mission to surface and celebrate fantastic creative brilliance from lower socioeconomic communities. Ditto helped me set the company up. They gave me a stack of standard music contracts they help register me with all of the royalties and uh, rights management companies around the world. And I signed Quasi as our founding artist. And we set out to realize his dream. That dream came true in July 2020 with the release of Quasi's debut Grok album, Blood on the English Carpet. A wonderful album with eight beautiful tracks along with five videos all released over YouTube. It's had 60,000 streams so far and over 600,000 views of the videos. But these days it's not enough to put your art out there and reach people. You have to be noticed. So that's what we're working on at the moment and you know we'll continue to do that uh, until we reach a point where this is a sustainable income for Quasi. He can do what he loves and he can earn decent money from it. And it's not just about Quasi, we've built a whole team around him. All of whom have two things in common. First, they're brilliantly creative. And second, they're also from lower socioeconomic communities and they need their start. We have Sabisu Malanga. He grew up in Zimbabwe. He taught himself to code. He saved up, he bought himself a computer. He then taught himself how to do special effects. 
his dream is to be a filmmaker. So Sabisu has done all of our music videos. Jada Bruni, a wonderful graphic artist from Croydon in South London. Jada's done the logo for BCR, as well as all of the album art. We've got Ben Nyonga. Ben was a sales guy at John Lewis, a department store here in London. Lost his job during COVID. His dream is to be a marketeer. He's studying marketing and, and PR. So Ben came over and he leads PR. And Zina Bamra. Z and I work together at, at Google. And Z just loves music. She's always wanted to be involved and she's been doing our artist liaison work. So technology is a great enabler. Joe and Quasi wouldn't have met had they not had that YouTube connection. Quasi and I connected over WhatsApp. I figured out how to start a record label with a simple Google search. We've released all of the music over digital streaming platforms, 200 of them around the world. And that's how people listen to Quasi's art. All of the videos are on YouTube. And now we're building an audience using social media. But the golden thread and the real secret source that links this story is the wonderful human connection and the unexpected collisions along the way. So next time you're sitting on that train or that bus, take the chance to strike up a conversation with the person next to you. Reach out to somebody who you would otherwise not perhaps meet or, or, or mix with. You never know where it will take you. And that's why the digital age is more than ever a human age.